if we're going to talk about the secrets behind building a successful website, let's frame it by discussing and defining success. And to do so, I want to just give you a little bit of history about where Life as a Human came from. Um, I had started a blog in 2009 called Synaptic Eye, and it was at the behest of my daughter and some people that I used to work with that told me, you're a good teacher and you're inspirational, so you should have a blog. And so I thought, all right, fine, I'll have a blog. And so I did a blog, and I was doing a couple of posts a week. And uh, it was really getting some traction. It was getting a lot of page views. I was getting some comments. And I was having a good time. And I was doing some self-exploration in the process. And I was learning all about WordPress, which I had already done because I've got five other websites that I'd migrated from um, static to WordPress. And anyway, so uh, one day I was in Twitter. Earlier on, I had maybe, I don't know, 50 or 60 Twitter followers. Everybody here use Twitter? Lots of, lots, of, lots of tweets in here, yeah. And, and um, I don't know if you went through the same experience I did, but when you first start with Twitter, you start to follow some people who just post inspirational quote after inspirational <laughs> quote after inspirational quote. And everybody's a life coach, right? Which was really depressing for me. Um, and there was this one person who was going on and on and on and on with these quotes, and he was really misquoting um, Vince Lombardi. And basically, he was going on saying that, you know, if, if there's things, if you have problems in your life, then, then obviously you're not in tune with the universe. You know, you're not doing things right because you're bringing it onto yourself. You bring problems onto yourself. I personally don't subscribe to that notion. I think you can be doing everything perfectly. The wind can blow, knock a tree over, take your house out. Problems aren't what define us. How we deal with problems are what define us. So I thought, all right, I'm going I'm to write, write an article. And I always think about my articles, uh, I always write the, the title of my article first. So I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to write an article tomorrow called My Life as a Human. And I'm going to you know, open up the kimono and let people see some of the great failures and some of the great problems that I've had. So the next morning I woke up and had a cup of coffee and I thought, wow, you know, my life as a human, that'd make a really good site. Nobody can remember synapticeye.com. My life as a human. So I went to see if it was available. Darn, it's taken. I wonder if life as a human is available. And it was. And in about a microsecond, I knew what I needed to do. And that was basically what I wanted to do, but not just for me. I wanted it to open up to anybody who writes to share their human experience so that we could all collectively, you know, learn about it. And that human experience, have, have you all frequented life as a human? The right answer is, yeah, all the time. <laughs> 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 So, you know, we have, we're very eclectic. Uh, we have uh, content ranging from uh, single moms to helicopter pilots who fly into Afghanistan and, you know, pull, pull troops out. Canadian helicopter pilots on contract to the U.S. It's, you know, quite interesting. So, having had five other businesses in the past and run some corporations, I put a business plan together in five days. So the plan was, without significant investment through sweat equity, we wanted to create an online magazine um, with uh, multiple authors that was international in scope. We wanted to focus on quality, not quantity. We wanted to be an aggregator. We didn't want to uh, focus on sensationalism. There's a lot of sites we were just saying before. You know, you, you browse around the internet, and boy, there's an awful lot of aggregators out there. They're just sucking other people's content in, and that's their website, right? We wanted to be original. We needed to build a team that was going to look after all the details of, of putting together a site, managing authors, uh, finances, legal stuff. Um, and we wanted to architect a site to scale to 30 million page views a month. Wow, that was a big goal. We're not there yet. We wanted to, be, uh, wanted to monetize and be profitable. So that was going to involve web development, content development, branding, SEO, social media, marketing, sales, admin finance, and human resources. Before I go on, I want this to be interactive. If you have questions, if there's a point on here that you go, but Gil, then, then ask. Let's, let's, let's chat. So the web development, um, going back to the whole definition of success here. We, we used WordPress MU. Uh, people are familiar, familiar with WordPress. Do you know the difference between WordPress and MU? WordPress MU. WordPress M MU stands for multi-user. So what's really cool with the WordPress multi-user site is you have one installation of WordPress, and then if you want to have um, 
Okay, for example, we have lifeashuman.com, we also have photos.lifeashuman.com, and we're about to launch arts, or art.lifeashuman.com. And I don't need to have separate WordPress installations. It's one WordPress installation, a theme for that particular domain. All of the plugins are available. You don't need to go and reload all of your plugins. It's easy to manage. So we could have 50 sites with one overall administration panel. Each site still needs its own, you know, its own theming and, and that type of thing. But from an administrative standpoint, MU is just much better for what we were doing. Uh, also, we were thinking that we would allow authors to have their own, um, their own login. So with, with MU, you can, you can easily set up multiple users, and I could say you can be a contributor at the art site, but not at the photo site. But you can be an editor over at Life as a Human. So I, I can set up different classes easily, which I, I'd have to set up three different user profiles for you if I had three different sites. We, uh, we use Studio Press. Um, people who've done WordPress installations know that you have to have a theme, right? So we, we decided to run with the Genesis framework by Studio Press. The reason we did that is it's robust. Um, the, essentially, the framework sits under WordPress and then the theme sits under the framework. So when Studio Press comes along and updates the framework, um, I, I do web development too, and my customers sometimes go, oh cool, there's an update for the theme, and they hit update, and all of their customizations are gone. Right? So with the Genesis framework, that never happens. When they upgrade the framework, you just get new functionality, but it doesn't mess up your theme. And that was really important to me because our team, a sweat equity team, there's going to be eight or nine people beaming into the site all the time. I didn't want somebody hitting the wrong button. Um, we used Headspace SEO uh, early on in the game. Ross uh, gave us quite a bit of advice and um, helped us set up Headspace. Thank you, Ross. But we're migrating to Genesis SEO. Did you, did you look at it? Not yet. Not yet. OK, all right. I might show under the hood after. We have 53 plugins. If any if you know WordPress, you know that you know, the advice is don't use too many plugins. We have 53. That's an awful lot. We're hosted by Liquid Web, the guys who gave us these. Um, um, they're, they're, um, they're just outside of Chicago. Um, they cost us just under $500 a month. They're sitting on twin fiber lines. Go ahead. I was going to ask back to Genesis. Is that a free uh, framework and themes or is it free? It's, yeah, well, it's 79 bucks. Okay. And then um, if, if, you were in, you know, if you're a developer or if you're going to have several sites, you can buy the framework and all the themes. There's about 35 themes now um, for 249 bucks, And then you have a lifetime... Um, uh, license to it. They have an amazing forum. And um, one of the SEO people at Ross, you know, introduced me to, well, just Joost? Joost? Joost. Joost. Um, Joost has worked closely with them in the development of their SEO um, architecture. And um, they're just, they're a great game, great, great group. You go into their support forums, you usually have an answer within an hour. Um, Liquid Web. Um, Sits in, they're in Chicago. They're expensive, but they sit. We have a dedicated server. It's not a virtual server, um, and they sit on twin, big twin fiber optic lines. So we know that we're always going to be available, and that was important. We want it to be available. The same people that gave you these little squeezy guys um, have also said, Gil, tell everybody in the room that if they're interested in our virtual hosting packages, I'll give you a seventy-five dollar discount to everybody in the room. So Ashley is going to remind me after to send you a link um, to, for some information and a $75 discount. Any of you can take advantage of it. And then we, there's two of us really that handle all the technical stuff. I, I do um, styling, form development. I'll, we'll talk about forms after plugin management. And then Lockenvar Lock um, handles PHP, SQL, server administration. You know, despite the fact that Liquid Web, Web is awesome, sometimes we're not, and the server goes down because we zigged when we should have zagged. And sometimes you need a, somebody who knows SQL and PHP to get in there. We've had actually days where 1,500 articles suddenly weren't there anymore. All gone, blank website. You know, and it's like all that work, right? And half an hour later, lock 
has it fixed. So, Locke's my hero. I can break things, he'll fix them. Content development. We, as of right now, have 1,719 original articles. We average two to three posts per day. Uh, we wanted our articles to be edited, copy edited. We didn't want to just be uh, like a hub pages or uh, there's a lot of what they call author sweatshops out there, right? We didn't want to be that. We wanted, at the very least, to have as few typos as possible. I'm sure you'll find typos at our website. I'm sure you'll find some mistakes. Even after two or three sets of eyes go on them, it can happen. It's digital, so we can fix it, right? So, but it, they're well edited. Uh, all have images. All the images have proper attributions. One of the things that really bothers me about the internet is people just go grab an image, slap it into a post, don't say where the image came from. You know, some, that's somebody's image. You know, I'm, I'm also a musician. It would be like somebody taking one of my songs and not saying, hey, that's, that's gay songs. Um, we started, our, our, our model started with an editor-in-chief. Do people here know Kerry Slavens? Kerry uh, was the founder of Artemis Branding. And uh, Kerry became our, and she's Chris Holt's wife. Chris works with Ross. Kerry was our editor-in-chief. Um, Chris, Sarah, and... Uh, and I helped Carrie, but basically she had a one-on-one -on -one rapport with the authors. Uh, she was managing about 30 authors. It was really going great, but then Yam Magazine came and stole her. And we're very happy for Carrie. You, you know, she got an editor's and editor-in-chief's role at Yam Magazine here in Victoria. And it was a really good score for her. So we needed to move, and so we moved to an, associ an associate ed editor model. So uh, Christy, Sarah are both associate editors, and so am I. In fact, Mr. DeWolf here submitted something as a guest author last week. It's now live at the site. I was his editor. I hope I did okay. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more after. We do submissions by form only. So, so here's, here's a big tip. If you're thinking of having a blog or a website and you're thinking, I know, I can just get people to send me stuff. Here's how it works. You get an email. I'm going to send you an article. Here's the subject. Here's part one in the next email. Oh, and here's an image in another email. Oh, and here's part two in another email. And oh, can we have this image in it in another email? And version two of part one and version three of part two. Now do that across, we have 80 authors. Imagine. Uh, it's just untenable. So we went to a form model. So I've, I've become a gravity form developer. And so we, I built a form. Um, you, you come to the site, did you use the form? You did yeah, use the form, I, yeah. You, and, and, and the form leads you through a process of what's your name, what's your email address, enter your article, and then I cleverly ask you for the SEO fields, right, so that that stuff's all there, an image, attribution for the image, and when you hit submit, it creates a post that's ready to edit in WordPress. I get a notification that says, Mike sent you a guest submission. I go into the back end, and there it is, waiting for me to edit. It's a thing of beauty. 80% of the work gone. So that's an already a post in WordPress, like a, like a blog post, but it's in a whole it's, it's in draft. It's a draft. Yeah. It, cool. It's ready to go. And, and all the fields filled. Yeah, that's cool. cool. That's very cool. The branding was originally done by um, Artemis Branding, um, Carrie's former company, and myself. Um, the feedback we've had since we launched in February of 2010 is you have a great looking site. We, I've never had somebody come up to me and say, and I have had this before on other things, I've never had somebody come up and say, your site really sucks, you know, or it looks really bad. I have had people say, it'd be nice if this was here. And so we welcome that kind of feedback because in WordPress things are so movable. It's, it's very easy to change the look of, of the site. We have good brand recognition. I run into people all the time. You know, what do you do? Life is a human. Oh, I know that site. That's... People remember life as a human. I think it's a fairly easy phrase to remember. Um, I think it has great branding possibilities. Photos.life as a human, art, you know, art about life as a human, photos about life as a human, SEO about life as a human. Um, brand is associated with a quality product, so I would call that a success. So we have a number of sources where we source our images from. We always strive to get cr uh, images that either, either, are either Creative Commons or public domain or open license. So if you use, um, m my favorite search 
mechanism right now because the other ones keep, everybody keeps changing their interface. Why do people do that? You get used to something and then, you know, you can't figure it out anymore. So Yahoo, if you do a, an image search on, on Yahoo, they have filters on the left-hand side and you can say um, author permits reuse, remix, redistribute, um, okay for commercial use. So we, we find images that fall into that umbrella and then at the end of the articles, we'll put photo credits, uh, you know, image of red truck by, if, if we've got the person's name, the person's name, and then we link um, target blank so it opens in a new page to that, um, to the source of the image. And again, it's, it's one of my pet peeves with so many sites on the internet, they, they don't do that. They don't attribute and they use stuff that's actually copywritten. And Getty images um, can get pretty heavy on you. I, I have a friend up the road, he's got a website, he had a tiny, like a tiny little thumbnail that he thought was really cool. They sent him an email and they said, um, you owe us $2,000. He didn't respond, he just deleted the thumbnail. And, but, you know, we, we just don't want that kind of... What if you buy it? Oh, well, then it's fine, yeah, if you go to Getty Images and license it. But, uh, you know, there's millions and millions of great pictures out there, you know, it's, that are... Creative Commons and open domain? Creative Commons, public domain. Uh, an, an excellent source of images is Wikipedia. If you go to Wikipedia and, um, you know, we just did a piece on, um, uh, by J.C. Scott, and it's uh, about uh, the, you know, Occupy this or that or the other. And um, he pointed to a picture from the French Revolution and the image that he gave us was really lousy. So I went to Wikipedia and well, there it is. And of course, it's something that was painted in the 1600s or 1700s. So it's, uh, 1800s. So it, it's public domain. And so we just attribute public domain back to Wikipedia, back to the... Also, Microsoft's clip art collection. Online, Microsoft's online clip art collection has some amazing photos. And they're absolutely free. And we just, we just say cop, or, um, photos from Microsoft clip art collection. SEO, Ross. Every article and every page on our website has all of the SEO fields filled, filled in. Do you all know what that means? Yes. So in... in we, we make sure that we have a custom document title, we have a custom description, we have our keywords filled in, we do the very best that we can to make sure that there's relevancy between them all, and it's really, really paid big dividends. Um, I, did a, I did a little test today um, before, before I came. One of our authors, Nathan Thompson, posted something today called the 80-20 rule, as it has to do with dating. And so this launched at two o'clock, or about one o'clock, sorry. And at three o'clock, I went and did a search in Google, the 80-20 rule, dating, and we're number five on page one in a Google search inside of three hours. How can that be? I thought you needed 24 hours for... We, because we get crawled all the time. We, we post so much stuff. And we also do, um, I'll mention it later, we do something called XML sitemaps. And maybe Ross can shed some shed some light. So <laughs> our, our traffic has been increasing, uh, Ross will like, the, like this slide. This is, this is a, a graph of, you know, February 1, 2010 and, and last month, right? And what this represents is how much of our traffic is coming from search. And initially it was very little because it takes time. It, it's, you know, there, I, I don't really believe there's a magic SEO bullet, especially for what we're doing. But over time, as, you're, as, as your archive of articles gets deeper and you've been indexed and you've been linked to, you start moving up the ladder. And uh, irrespective of, of what your page rank is, Ross and I were talking about this the other day, um, you can still have authority with the, with the search engines. Uh, by the way, we also try to keep Bing and Google happy. You know, yes, or, um, um, Bing and Yahoo. Yes, Google is the biggie. But, you know, if you could dominate Google or Bing, that'd be kind of good too, right? They still bring a lot of traffic. Uh, your site has so much content that's kind of like about a whole bunch of different topics. Do you have kind of like, like one theme that you focus for? Yeah, that's been, that's been a... That's been a really... No, no. Uh, the articles are all over the map. They're very, I mean, we've got dog... 
how to walk a dog, right? Number seven, page one, Google search. There's 34 million, I think. That was really cool to see that, right? Um, so no, that's, that's been a challenge, and Ross and I have chatted about that several times. Uh, the only hope we have in that regard is to SEO optimize individual, some individual pages, like about life as a human. But how do you, how do you I don't know, how would you make, how would you say, what, what is life as a human about in 160 characters? It's like, it's a challenge. It's, it's not an easy thing, right? Other things I've done before, they're vertical. It's about running shoes. We make the best running shoes. This is difficult. So we just decided, okay, well, we don't have an answer for that. I'm, I'm very much a believer in look after the things you can look after. And, the, and one of the things I can look after is having great content and making sure that it's SEO optimized to the best of our abilities. Could it be better? You bet. If we had an SEO person on staff, this is a sweat equity shop, remember? I'm funding this out of my mortgage. So if we had an SEO person on staff, yeah, every article could be, you know, you could deploy some really cool tools and you could, you could tweak them up. But despite the fact that we're not, we're still, we're still getting some good. So what uh, service do you sell? What product do you sell to generate income? I'll get there. Oh. I'm going to do revenue soon. Um, social media. We use social media to drive traffic. It's probably a really bad strategy. Social media is a great conversational tactic. It's a good way to engage your audience. But you need to have somebody who has the time to get to know the audience and spend time tweeting and Facebooking and, you know, and actually doing the engagement. I, I just say we posted something new and I say thank you to people for following us and every now and again I'll say something funny, I hope. But we don't have a dedicated twit. <laughs> We have 4,000 Twitter followers. We have very few referrals. We're closing in on 700 Facebook fans. We have much better referrals on Twitter from Facebook. We have a tiny number of stumble upon followers and enormous returns. You're going to see a slide in a minute that will blow your mind. Uh, Reddit and Dig and, and others we have very limited success with. So from the standpoint of social media, we have, there's lots of room for improvement for us from the standpoint of engagement. But from the standpoint of getting traffic to the site, check this out. So, when I did this slide, we had our total traffic to date had been 1.477 million uh, views. Look at, the, look at the referrals from StumbleUpon. 37.7% of our traffic is a StumbleUpon referral. 0.1 or 0.9 is Twitter. Return on investment, I spend probably every day a half an hour inside of Twitter. I might spend five minutes, if, and stumble upon. I, I knew there'd be questions here. <laughs> but stumble upon, how do you, stuff that do you actually for each page you post, do you go into stumble upon? No, stumble and, upon and, and here are the stumble upon secrets, right? So do you know what stumble upon is, first of all? No. Stumble upon is a referral engine. So you go to, you go to stumble upon and you build a profile, and you, you know, it says, I'm Mike, and I like poetry, photography, technology, and food, okay? And, what stu and, then, and then you download their toolbar. And when you hit the stumble button, stumble upon looks at your profile and it goes, well, here's something that all of our other users who like food think is good. We'll show it to Mike. So that just brings a, a web page up for you. And Mike will either go, wow, that's a really great referral. I like that. Or he'll go, no. Don't like that one, and he just moves on. If he really likes it, he'll thumb it up. He'll give it a thumbs up. That's the limit of his, in, of his engagement. I mean, it's, it's a thing of beauty. He doesn't have to tweet. He doesn't have to Facebook. He's, you know, if he likes something, he thumbs it up. If he doesn't like it, he just hits the stumble button again. He could hit thumbs down, but if he's going to hit thumbs down, you're going to ask him why. And so usually he won't thumb things down, unless it's really offensive, you know, something that... So, it's a referral engine. It's, it's, it's going to deliver to you what you want to see based on a set of uh, you know, criterion that you've given it. And it learns as it goes along. It gives you something, you go, no, I don't like that. And it goes, okay, well, he doesn't like that kind of food. Maybe he'll like, you know, maybe he'll like this kind of food. Is there any indication in your statistics about how 
how long people, the referrals stayed on their site? Yes, there is. They went deeper. You bet, yeah. I'll, and someone please remind me to mention time on time. <laughs> Thank you. I, <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> uh, and, I'll, and I'm, I'm going to do that. I'll just um, finish the stumble upon question. So to stumble stuff, um, if I write something at gillnamier.com and I go to stumble upon and thumb it up, it's like gillnamier thumbed up gillnamier. Ah, you know, it carries a lot more weight if Ross Dunn thumbs up gillnamier or Mike or you or you know any of you. And then when it gets even better is if you take the time when you give it a thumb up, you can actually write a little comment. Hey, love this post, Gil. Thanks. This is really great. So the next person who looks at it might see that referral. They'll read it and they'll go, you know what? He's right. I love this. It, we have one post that's just gone viral. It's, it's almost at 100,000 page views. It's got, I don't know, it's been, it's been thumbed up by, I think there's eight pages. You, you, you saw it, right? Yeah, that poetry piece. It's at 83,000, 83k. Yeah, it actually took the server down. If you're dealing with poets, you can't stop them from writing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, But so the, the power we stumble upon is the, the more referrals you get. You know, everybody says on Twitter, like if I tweet something and you retweet it, and then I get a second level retweet, and da -da 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 -da. so we try that and look at the numbers. Like the numbers are. It's just not worth the investment, as far as I'm concerned. I, if Twitter disappeared tomorrow, there's the impact to us. Could that maybe have something to do with you know, the attention span of the people that are using Twitter? Because you're just using... Well, it's, yeah, the 120, 140 character tweets, yeah. And it's also, it gets, stuff gets lost in the, in the noise, right? Yeah. Where Twitter is awesome is if, 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 if my granddaughter suddenly disappeared, you know, I can go into Twitter and say, help, my, you know, granddaughter's missing in North Saanich, and everybody, you know, like, pound YYJ, like, help, help, somebody, you know, and I'll get help. That's very cool. One thing that I'd like to mention about Twitter, though, it's a great mechanism for finding great information. For example, I use it to find great articles, and then I stumble them. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a leading engine for anything that's new that's happening right now, and then you go and engage it. So it, it's, it's, it's difficult. Like yeah. Definitely from traffic direct, it's low. It always has been. So what's the story with the forum? Is that a healthy or unhealthy obsession? Oh, okay, yeah, no, so, yeah, yeah forum. So the, the, I, I left a couple on here. Very good. Uh, we have a, uh, an author, his name is Steve Erickson. He's a science fiction author. He's written 10 books. Uh, sorry, he's a um, fantasy author out of England. He's also a paleontologist. So he's written this series of, of posts at Life as a Human on his midlife crisis. And he wants to write his 10th book, but he also wants to get back to paleontology, right? So there's articles about him going out into Afghanistan and getting bit by some weird spider and almost dying, of, which of course becomes fodder for book 10, right? You know, under hallucination of the spider bite, he comes up with a new character, I guess, I don't know. But what he has, he is one of the most popular fantasy novelists on the planet. We're very lucky to have him. And there's about 26 forums out there dedicated just to him. The reason I put his number in here, I could have put lots of others. Um, that forum action gives, gives us more than Twitter without us doing anything. This other number, this other number constitutes, if, if Ross links to us from his site, let's say, we have authors who link to us from their own personal blogs. They drive 30, 40, 50 page views a day sometimes. You know, in, in, I mean, we're starting to get into the 10,000 page view day numbers, so it doesn't sound like a lot, but every penny helps, right? Every page view is an important page view. If you have a retail store, you welcome everybody who comes in the door. You don't wait for 50 to come in. You, you know, you have to, you have to cater to every single one. So that's the other one. Time on site browse rate. Okay, so one of the big knocks that StumbleUpon has, because StumbleUpon actually doesn't come to us through Google. It comes direct from StumbleUpon. One of the big knocks is, I come to your site, I stumble, and I, and I come to your site and I go, no, not my cup of tea. I stumble, I'm gone. I've been on your site for two seconds. This drags your time on site metric way down. If I go into Google Analytics and I look at my stumblers and I filter out, 
Um, remember, we went through this exercise, and I filter out stumblers who, who were there. What did we use? Five seconds? I think we used five seconds. I said, filter out all stumblers who aren't there for, who leave before five seconds, you know, right? 30% of that number is on our site for over four minutes. Now, has anybody here ever done classic marketing? You know, like when um, Reader's Digest sends a card and it ends up in your mailbox. Do you know what the percentage return on that is? Less than 1%. Yeah, it's teeny, teeny, teeny. But they, they still do it because 1% adds up, right? 30% is astounding. And every time we have um, a, a, a stumble upon event, and you'll, and you'll see in some other charts, we get these huge spikes in traffic. We've, our server's gone down sometimes because we had a thousand page views in a minute. In a minute. And they all came from StumbleUpon, right? And of course, SQL and Apache just go, ah, and they die. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh no! It could have been 10,000. Denied. Bounce rate. So the definition of bounce rate, and again, Ross is going to correct me if I'm wrong here, but the way that I understand bounce rate is, I come to your site, I read one thing, and I leave. And that's a bounce. And in many circles, that's considered not a great thing. You know, like if my bounce rate is, if everybody came to my site and read one article, and actually read it, and then left, they're all bounces. I have 100% bounces. How can that be a bad thing? I understand it would be better if they read the article and then went, click, let's read this one next. But it's an article. Not everybody has time you know, to read an article, another article, another article. What they will do, though, is bookmark us. And as Arnold said, they'll be back. And that's, that's what we see. We see that our, our um, you know, direct traffic, our direct traffic used to be like 5%. You know, so it's, it's skewing. This number also, I should mention, this the stumble upon number used to be closer to 50, and the Google number was down around 10. You saw the Google growth. That number's flattening out, and that's good, because what that, what that tells me is we're, we're starting to get into, into some kind of balance now between... So I don't know if you can do this with Google Chrome, for example, or any other web browser, but it would be nice. It makes sense to have a bookmark button somehow on your site there. Uh, yeah, it's tough. We, we offer all kinds of sharing options. Some of them, uh, one of the things, uh, actually this is a great time to mention this too. A lot more and more and more and more and more people are, are blocking Java. So, we, our, when we talk about these, these are quantified page views. I'm not guessing here. These are, we know. But that is 30% shy of the real number. There's a lot of people that visit our site. We don't know they visited our site. We know on the server they visited our site because the server captures the IP address. It knows there was a visit, there was an event. But if you're blocking JavaScript, so the problem is... Is that blocking Java or JavaScript? They're blocking, some people block JavaScript. There's JavaScript blocker, ad blocker, there's... there's yeah, but then you can't hardly do anything on the web. Well, but, you know, I mean, the, part of the problem is, suppose, suppose you're, and I love them, BC government employees, right, that are surfing our site. It's not them that's blocking JavaScript. It's, it's BC Gov, right? Any major Fortune 500 corporations put all kinds of stuff in place to block this, block that, block the other, right? Because they don't want, uh, they'll show up. We can find their IP address, right? They don't want to show up in Quantcast, which you'll see in a few minutes, saying, and Gil's largest source of traffic is CIBC. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, any other questions on? I was just going to make a comment on JavaScript. It might not be just JavaScript being blocked, but JavaScript failing. Because a lot of, I don't know if Google Analytics still holds that you have to have the bottom of the page. That means all the other JavaScript in the page has to work well before it chokes yep. out. It can choke out by the time you get to the bottom, yep. and it looks like it's not there at all. Okay, and that's true. But we have the Quantcast one at the top, the Google Analytics one at the bottom. And I've actually done a test. I, gave Ross, Ross these results. We posted a, an article, not at this site, at another site. And I made it uh, no index, no follow, so, it, right? And then I emailed 40 or 50 of my friends and said, go to this link. 
And when you've done it, email me to confirm. And tell me, did you go there from a PDA, desktop, work, home? So I got all this great data. And the server said, server said, 50 people came. The quantified data said, 35 people came. 30%. Quantcast knows about this. Google knows there's nothing that can be done. It's just the way it is. So I just, when I talk to an advertiser, I, I, I just say, eh, it's 18, 1.8 million. I just add 30%. <laughs> I don't. Um, uh, marketing, uh, we had no real marketing budget to work with. We tried AdWords, no luck. We did Facebook ads, not much luck. Press releases are great, we just don't do enough of them. Uh, but when we launch a press release, we seem to get all kinds of hits and phone calls and emails. And, and that's so we got. Is there anything special that you do in your press releases? So um, I've forgotten the name of the service. There's a service we use, and so it, it costs, I think it's about 150 bucks or something, you know, to issue the press release, which is why we don't do a lot of them, because... Like uh, thank you, yeah. And, um, and I've tried a few without, and we get nothing. So when PR Web sends it out, and I've tried t targeting def different demographics with PR Web, because you can do that, and, um, and, and it works, you know. It, it turns out that the West Coast are more interested in reading than the East Coast. I don't know why. Oh, sorry. I wasn't quite finished that one. Um, anybody ever heard of Stumble Upon ads? Ross, have you? Um, yeah. So, Stumble Upon, you can go and you can set up a marketing campaign at Stumble Upon. Th and this, is, this would be great if you had a running shoe site. So, you SEO optimize your running shoe site. And you set up a page, a great landing page that has a big call to action you know, buy my shoes, do it now. And you, you can target at face at stumble upon, um, you can target demographic and geographic. So I could say I want to I want to I want only women between the ages of 20 and 30 who live in the United States, right, to actually come to the uh, to to get served up this stumble. It costs you five cents a stumble. It's cheap. So early on, we used to I used to do that. I put $100 into stumble upon and you know there was a way to get so, so sorry when you say five cents a stumble is that when somebody actually gives you the thumbs up no when, no what happens is when you do that they'll serve you up whether or not somebody's ever thumbed you up before you're paying for the privilege to be served up on your network they manually check each one though you submit it and then you have to wait 24 hours sometimes 36 because they look to make sure it's not something that's going to be outside of their community's best interest if you will right um, Especially the parameters you just did. <laughs> well, I didn't mention poets that time, though. Um, giveaways. I was mentioning this to Ho Jose. Um, when we started the site, I thought, okay, I want to get a subscription list. And so we, we promoted subscribe to Life as a Human for a chance to win $250. For the next three months, I'm going to give away three $250 prizes. And all of you will be eligible for the grand prize of $500 in the fourth month. You'd think, you'd think you'd get a lot of subscriptions, right? So that's, what is that, $1,250 that I wrote out in checks to various people? Got just shy of 200 subscriptions. Good odds, I wish I'd known about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 it ain't happening again. But if you but if you want another stress toy, <laughs> the bag's right. <laughs> the bag's right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, guerrilla marketing. You'll like this. Whenever I go into. Can we just go back to the giveaway for a second? Um, what kind of a form did you use? Did you just ask for a name and email address? Yep. Or were you Nope. Just yeah. In fact, in fact, we went to the we went to the trouble of making it referral based too. So we said to you, give us two hundred or give us your name, and you, in fact, you don't even need to give me your name, just your email address. Okay. Okay. And if you tell Chris about us, and Chris comes to us, Chris can put his name in and your name, and then you'd get two, two entries. Two entries. Right? 
So we got 200, and I think there was maybe 30 people in total who just kept telling all their friends. <laughs> um, guerrilla marketing. This has worked. Yeah, it's been fun. Whenever I go into Future Shop, I go up and down the aisles <laughs> in Future Shop, and I put dub 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 dot life is human, dub 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 dot life is human, dub 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 dot life is human. It's great. It looks really great to look down. 15 computers, and all of them are on our website. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've seen people, they're like, well, what is that? You know. Sometimes we have weird pictures. I just put up some signs on uh, hydroports. I don't know, is that legal or not? I mean, I just tried it. You know, I, I, I don't know. But I've, con I've, I've considered it. Sorry? Stickers and library books? Stickers and library books, yeah. Either way, I switch them myself, take them down the center of the building. Helium balloons? What's my question on the giveaways? Um, I, I found one thing, I mean, for my business, I find it important to know my visitors. Um, so I'm also building a mailing list, and I found it relatively successful to offer an information package. Yes. Which, I, which is not just by click, by download, but again, you need to submit your email address, then you get the link sent to your email immediately. Yeah. Um, and at least I built a list of, I don't know, 650 people so far. Um, without any cost, right? It's right. Only an auto autoresponder email, yeah. fairly simple. But I guess it depends on your visitor audience and on the content, what you're offering. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're up to about 800. And, and um, I mean, the problem with us is that when we, send out a, when we send out our weekly digest, we're just sending you an email that says, Life is Human has posted 18 articles this week. Title, link, title, link, title, link, title, link. So we're just reminding you. Remember, there's stuff to read. What we, we could do much better if we added more value. How to be a better blogger. Thoughts on writing. You know, and and, and people, who, people who do really, really well with subscription lists, that's what they do. They're offering, so you're probably offering more value to your yeah, subscribers. Like, yeah. I'm selling log calls, yeah. so I try you know, to offer a guide how to build a log And that's, yeah, exactly. And so, and, and for us, again, it's a, a lot of it for us is just a matter of having people to actually be able to focus on some of those particular things. And um, that's one of the, that's where there's lots of room for improvement. Um, we're looking at some new monetization angles and big bold letters, there's lots of room for improvement here. Selling impression ads is our primary model. And um, the average per sale per ad is $450. Our average ads per month are 1.25 ads, so there you go, you do the math, it's not a whole bunch of money. What if we reduce the cost of the ad? Done it. Uh -huh. See, and the thing is, is at, 420, at 450, for the amount of page views we're giving, we're actually a bargain. Uh -huh. That number hasn't changed. Our traffic has doubled. Right. So our ad rate is actually 50% lower than what it should be right now. What does that translate to? Uh, I think we're, well, depending on the ad zone, we're anywhere between $250 and $10 CPM cost. Yeah. Yeah. We should be, we should be around $20. Do you know, and do you know TechCrunch? Tech, so TechCrunch is one of the superstar websites on, you know, on the internet. They, they're huge. They're very well monetized. They're making millions of dollars. They were working for, uh, for their advertising. They were working with a company called Federated Media. This is a company we've been trying to get to notice us. They're not um, because we're eclectic. Um, iSocket or TechCrunch moved away from Federated Media and moved to iSocket. Federated Me Media has a group of dedicated salespeople who maintain relationships with potential advertisers and bring those advertisers to the blog. In exchange, they charge you, or they, 40 to 60 percent of the revenue goes into, yeah, they're, yeah. So when we, when, we, when we did the initial market research on Life as a Human, I looked at a couple of sites in particular. If you don't know these sites, go look at them. Deuce.com, D-O-O-C-E.com. She's a mommy blogger. She gets three and a half million page views a month. She was getting five million page views a month. She was making six to eight hundred thousand dollars a year off her blog. I'm not a big Deuce fan, but there's a lot to learn from what she was doing. Um, the other one, which I think is just one of the best sites on the internet, is called thepioneerwoman.com. 
And the pioneer woman is a woman who moved from LA to a ranch with um, her husband that she calls the Marlboro Man. And she's, a, she's an amazing photographer, she's a great cook, and she puts these blog posts together that, you know, put most other blogs on the internet to shame. Her, her ads, there are no ads. The ads are within the images. So there's this beautiful spaghetti sitting there, and in the background is a very high-end knife. The name is prominent on the knife, right? Very, very tasteful. She's got a big team. She's around 15 million page views. And she's making, yeah, she's making God knows how much money. But both of them used federated media. Um, and there's federated media sites that get 20, 30,000 page views a month and federated monetizes them. We're way beyond that and they still won't talk to us. So we, find, we went fine, whatever. We'll go and play with iSocket. iSocket's different. iSocket doesn't have um, the dedicated marketing team. What they offer is they offer an ad delivery service, which is very, very cost effective. They're new, uh, they're, they're very aggressive, but they're really, really friendly, um, and they're really getting into bed with an awful lot of very, very big players out there. Do you, uh, it seems to me that this could be fun in real print, it's like collections of themed, almost like a bathroom reader. Mm -hmm. Is that about taking these and going You bet, that? yep, and that was, that's actually, Part of our, our, our original plan, I didn't mention all the details of our original plan, but part of our original plan was to have what we think of as channels. So as we get, you saw we have 1,800 articles, right? So as we get 300 articles on dogs, for example, you know, whatever the, the right number is, I don't know. We then have dogs.lifeishuman.com, right? And we brand it out. It's its own entity. Absolutely, it'll be better for SEO, and, it, and the advertisers will get it. They'll go, oh, this is about dogs, you know, as opposed to... Oh, interesting. No, that's it. I always end sentences on two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask, do you own the copyrights to the material, or is it the author's? Like, can no. you publish it in the book, or would you... We can, okay. but we would ask the author first. So, great question. I don't really talk about... Um, um, I didn't have that in my slides, so I really should have thought of it. We have three types of authors. Our regular authors from our original plan. Our original plan was to have 25 authors who would give us four blog posts a month. That would give us 100 a month. That's lots, right? That's good. And for that, we would give them a percentage of the pot. I, was, I said I would take revenue, take 15% of our revenue, put it into a pot, and every month we'll look at how many page views did your articles bring in this month, I don't care if they were posted last year. If you, if you drove traffic this month, I'm paying you for it out of that 15%. So if you were 10% of our traffic and there was 1,500 bucks sitting in there, I'd write you a check for $150. The authors love it. They think it's, a, it's great. We don't have any revenue yet, so they're not loving that part of it. So now we have guest authors. Mike just submitted something. And they get nothing but the privilege of being on our site. Now, if Mike decides he wants to be a regular author, he's welcome into the fold. There's no, you know, part, and so to, to your question, um, what, we, what we did is we said, we don't want to be like other publishers who can be very draconian, right? The way they work is, you give me an article, I'll pay you 100 bucks and then it's mine forever. You can never, ever, 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 ever use that again. What we say is, give us an article, we want a 90-day exclusive. After 90 days, you can go and do whatever the heck you want with it. So you if can... you want to republish it on your own blog, let's say like that? Oh yeah, we, and, but we encourage our authors, if, if you give us a, a, an article, you should be putting a link and a teaser at your blog saying, you know, go to Life as a Human and, and read, because that's, that's very good. But if they want to repost it, all we ask is that they do the correct thing, which is at the end saying, first post it at, Life as a Human, link back to life as a human, which is just proper attribution, yeah. good web at, at, etiquette. But do you also give like author credit if the author has a website, for example, do you put that at the end of an article? Uh, every, every regular, yes, Mike, at the end of Mike's article, there's a picture of Mike, little bio, link to his site. Regular authors have a, an actual regular author bio 
page, if you will, that archives all of their articles. So if I click on Nathan Thompson, I get his bio, and then I get an archive of everything he's ever written at Life as a Human, including links to his blog and his mom, if he wants. You know, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty open. Um, who owns Life as a Human? I do. It, well, it's, there's a, there's a, uh, it's a corporation, so I, I incorporated it. There's, there's a, a shareholders agreement, but I'm the, the major, I'm the, I'm the major shareholder. Can you just go back to ISOC and explain how that works? How does your relationship work with them? You call and they find like, they scout the ad type people for you? No, I'll, sh I'll show you a slide in a second. It'll all, it'll, it'll all make sense. In fact, I've, I'll go live in, in a second. Okay, this is great. Everybody knows Google AdSense, right? Right? And we're all going to make money with Google, right? So we're, we're getting up to $100 per month. We use Google Analytics. Ross had a good chuckle at this when I told them. They know the IP addresses of everybody in our company because we filter them out so we don't track our own page views. We get this letter. I'm just going to let you read. Just, just read. You, a process you can go through to contest that, I did, and, they, and it's, it's all automated. There's no human beings involved, so. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, by the way, if you have a Google account and you lose it, see, you asked who owns life as a human. Well, I used my Gil name, your Google credentials, of course, right? They know. So I didn't just lose my Google account for life as a human. I am banned from the Google kingdom. I can never, again, ever, at any website have Google AdSense. Because apparently, I'm bad. <laughs> so, I'm on your map somewhere. They weren't making you any money anyway, were they? Well, it was getting up to 100 bucks. I mean, 100 bucks is 100 bucks, you know. It was, that was costing you 100 bucks? No, it was, I was, I was yeah, making, was yeah. Cost. Affiliate programs, these are great, right? We tried Commission Junction. Do Commission Junction, you'll make lots of money. We served a million ad impressions. I sound like McDonald's. Zero revenue. These were big header ads, big ads down the side. These were Sony, Canon, you know, really nice ad creatives that I would go and pick myself so that our site kept looking good. And we made zero dollars. Never blue. Local company, we did 300,000 ad impressions and we made $2.75. Fail. Blog ads, everybody remember blog ads? Two years, we've had seven ads served to us from them. I call out a fail. And finally, last slide on this is we, we had to do ad, admin, finance, human resources. We went through incorporation, share structure, legal documents, terms of use, privacy policy. Those are all original Life as a Human documents. Uh, we worked with a lawyer who's an expert in that area. We wanted to make sure that some reader didn't take umbrage with anything that our authors could say. We, we're very much like a radio station. Oh, if you ever read it, it's like, you know, the opinions expressed by the authors are theirs and not necessarily ours and vice versa, right? Um, we needed to track sweat, sweat equity shares, pay the authors, do accounting year-end, all that kind of stuff. If, does anybody here know the name Abe Books? So Vivian Pira and Rick Pira were the original you know, founders of Abe. They're on our team. And so Viv, God bless her, handles all of this stuff and she does it really great and she's a lot of fun to work with. And um, yeah, Viv rocks. So. I thought I'd give us a scorecard, right? And actually, and we're going to get into some more interesting stuff. Um, when, when Ross said the secrets of a successful website, right? I thought, well, it, have we been successful, right? It was an interesting exercise for me to go through and see what's working, what's not working. It's not like I don't do this all the time, but I, I needed to do it from a thousand feet up. And so if I, if, if I try to be objective, I think we're, we get an A in web development, an A in um, uh, content development, a B plus in branding, a B minus in SEO, a C in social media, a D in marketing, and Ross asked me to be polite so I can't tell you how I feel about sales right now, um, and you know, an A in admin and human resources. Some tips. Content is king. It doesn't matter if you've got a blog or a dynamic 
website, you need to have content. I just said I do web development. I would say 60-70% of the people that I engage with have been working on a blog for the last year. They've gone through every widget known to man. They've changed their header 20 times. They have no content, none. They might have an about page and a contact me page, but the about page is just like, it's about me. And, and the WordPress thing still says just another WordPress site. <laughs> right? You need to have content. Don't worry about what your site looks like. Uh, take that on balance, right? But if you don't have content, it doesn't matter. You're back to what I just described about having a huge marketing budget, but vapor, right? You can always polish your website. But if you have no content, I contend you have nothing. I think the blogging size is too overwhelming the prospect uh, for a lot of people to actually create the content on a regular basis. And so uh, it's better to kind of not get started than be stuck with having to do something on an almost daily basis. Yep. I think that's why people don't get into the content. Well, again, and, and again, Ross, Ross can, you know, can better speak to this from the, from the standpoint of search engine optimization. When, when I had Synaptic Eye, I said, I'm going to do two posts a week. That's not a lot of work. As you've probably sussed out, I can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So I can write and write and write and write and write and write. It's easy for me to spin out an article. Yes, there are times when you're like, oh, God, I don't want to write an article, and you just can't get inspired. But I'm also a musician. I've written over 100 songs. And there's times I pick up my guitar, and I'm like, I don't want to touch my guitar. I just don't. Go away. Leave me alone. You're a curse. But you have, you have to get past it. You have to pick up the guitar, and you have to start doing something. And you have to, you have to say to yourself, I'm going to do two a week. You know? And, and as I'll mention in a minute, you want to schedule that stuff out. You know, you don't want to do two and then just post a Monday and then there's nothing till next Monday, right? And, and you know, to point, the, I mean, the other thing is, if you're going to blog, do it because you want to. Do it because you love your subject matter. Do it because you can actually bring value. Don't, don't do it because you think there's a market for being an expert in a particular area. There might be, but it's a long, long climb. Do it because you can build authority. Do it because you're sharing something with humanity. Do it because you can make my life better. Um, and, and, then, and then you're likely, if you stick to that, you're likely to stick to posting content. So you said when you first got started, you put a few articles out there and then you got some page views. So how did you do that? Uh, I mean, if you just put some content in there. Well, I, I know a lot of people, so I, told, I emailed everybody going, whether you want it or not, you're getting my weekly digest. If, you, if you're offended by that, you can unsubscribe, right? <laughs> and, and I tweeted and Facebooked and I, I just did that to friends. I didn't do it to, you know. Two friends, not four friends. <laughs> uh, about 1,500. A lot of friends. Well, good acquaintances. <laughs> what about advertising? Yeah. Uh, what, what are your rules? Sir? What are our rules? Well, we can write a blog about something and advertise on your site or pay for that. Yes, that? absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, if, if, well, if, if, you, if you wrote a blog post about pornography and you, yeah, no. If you, if you uh, we get, we're starting to get two or three advertorial post requests a day now. And what those are is, hey, I'll write you a post about the five top ways to do this. And all I ask for is a link back to this. And the link back to is how to make your hair darker or how to have a bigger mustache or and no thanks. And those writers out there, that's what they do. And you know, they send lots and lots and lots of, of requests out. But if you, if you have something, if you have a product or if you've got a blog, or we, we welcome ads. In fact, we'd love to have your ad. And in fact, if anybody in here wants to sell an advertisement at Life as a Human, we'll pay 30%. So go sell some ads for me. <laughs> does, that, does that answer the? Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of things you can do there. I just was wondering what you charge for that and if you allow that, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, if you've, you know, we've, we've run ads for people before. Like, for example, we'll go to the site in a second. We have a, a sponsor category ad, for example. So it's 50 bucks a month. And anytime somebody clicks on the category archive, 
Ross has got one. You know, there it is, Stepforth. This category sponsored this month by Stepforth. So if there's a category with 100 articles and people are flipping through that category, you're going to get a lot of branding. The, the trick is, is to think of your ad from the standpoint of brand, like do something that's going to stick in the reader's mind because not very many people click on things. As you saw, we served a million ad impressions and made zero dollars, right? So you're better, you're better to think of, of that kind of thing as something that's going to get their attention. The accent in ads is a really good example. You know, when you, you, you're traveling somewhere, you want to bring your pet, who do I do? Accent ins. I do it with accent ins. Okay, here's, um, this is cool, Ross. Regular content. Don't give up on your content. So we've got these 1,800 articles, right? Look at this. We, we post this thing. Uh, this is by Mike Vardy. Does, do people know Mike, Var Mike Vardy? Mike Vardy's a local Victoria, uh, real funny guy. He's, he's into eventualism. So if you email him, he'll eventually get back to you. Um, he's, he's a comic. And, um, and he's written some posts for us. And look at this. So it comes out, and it gets you know, almost 200 page views and 100 page views. And it kind of goes to sleep. Then you know, 50, then it goes to sleep. And months later, boom, back up it comes and it goes down, boom. Here's another example. Look at this one. It has 37,000 page views. Came out, you know, it was getting around 200. Like, that's a good number on one day for one post. That's a great number. And then it goes to sleep. And then look. It, it, it wakes up later on. Here's another example. Don't give up on your content. I'm sorry? Do you track why they... Um, so, well, there's, there's, there's different, it's hard to know exactly, I, can, I have some educated guesses. As, as the site overall grows, new viewers start to go through the archive. They find this article, they thumb it up and stumble upon, or they retweet it in Twitter, or they mail it to, email it to somebody, right? Um, or uh, the homes of your childhood is suddenly... Uh, there's something about that phrase that people are searching for. You know, it's, it's relevant, right? So when you have that much content, and our, our goal, by the way, is to go to six to ten posts a day, not three. Um, so when you have that much content, uh, in, in time you're covering everything. You know, you might be eclectic, but you're kind of like um, full eclectic. I, uh, there must be a word. Yeah. <laughs> so don't give up on your content. In time, it's going to um, finding content and managing authors. If you're going to do a if you're going to do a multi-user blog, you have to think about how you're going to manage your authors. So when you talk about, um, you know, can I actually commit to doing one or two posts a week? Well, maybe it's you and a friend or someone else, or maybe you know some people who are into the same interests who might be interested in doing that, right? So now now you have to manage those authors, and that's where having those forms I was talking about comes in really handy because then instead of them emailing you back and forth and there being 10 or 15 emails for every blog post you do. You just give them a form, they can go to it, they can post it, and then they can email you. Or actually, it email, emails you automatically and says, there's a new one, right. Um, so, and finding the content, you know, is really easy. We put a little ad up at the site that says, write for life is human. And in Twitter, I go, expose your stuff. At, this is one place Twitter actually isn't bad for us, you know. Expose, your, expose yourself at life is a human. We do it at Expose your writing. <laughs> At life is human. I have a question before you continue. Mm. Do you, everything that gets archived, is there a way that you like refresh it and have it on the homepage, stuff that's been done? Yes. Where people can kind of read it? Yeah, one of the um, easiest to show you. When you scroll down the site, if, if you're familiar with WordPress, all of these areas, so this area here, this area here, these are called widget containers. And in this particular widget container, I've put a widget that says, show recent articles from all categories, show X amount of content, and then give us a read more link. So what we do often, I'm not running it right now, but right here, see where it says, humor awaits you? I put random articles from the archives, and I put this widget into random mode. Every, do, every time you do a refresh, it randomly picks something out of the, right? And I found that when I do that, sometimes it works really, really well. But it's very random. So it's hard to, but 
That's one way to do that. Yeah, um, I was just wondering how much caching you're doing um, with sort of your widgets and your high page views. Oh, oh, how much caching we're doing on this? Uh, we're, we're, we're running uh, WP Super Cache, so we're caching everything, which works great. The only time it doesn't work great is Mike emails me and he says, actually, WP Super Cache is super cache, <laughs> super crash is actually really stable. But if Mike emails me and says, oh, why did you use that picture? Can you please change the picture? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, sure. So I beam into the back end, I delete the picture, I upload a new picture, I hit save. And I, you know, go back onto what I'm doing, and I forget to go and refresh the cache. I have to refresh the cache for the whole site. I can't refresh the cache just for, for that. But yes, we do, and yeah, it makes a huge difference because we've got a lot of content on our page, and and the site load time is actually pretty snappy. Uh, if we have caching turned off, it it gets pretty slow, and if we have caching turned off, we start running into Apache and SQL issues, especially when StumbleUpon comes slamming us with lots of page views. Um, I just was wondering, so you wouldn't actually go back and repost artifacts? No, no, no we don't. But what we do do is if Mike writes part two of um, the last, the last uh, yeah, which was so, uh, building, goals. building a goals engine, uh, what we do is in that article we put a link at the bottom of it Right. Oh. At, in, in fact, another advantage to being a regular author is every time you post something, the last five things you posted are always shown at the bottom of your article. We were running a plugin called Yet Another Related Post Plugin. YARP is what it's called. And what it does is it tries to look at your content and find related stuff and put it in there. And, and, it, and it's good. It works, except that it's just really not that related. Like it, you know, it's better if a human being does it because you you get a dog article and then there'd be some piece about travel to Mexico. <laughs> and you're trying to find the, where's the segue, you know, like, the dog's name was Max. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the problem we run into is, I'm going to keep using Mike, I'm sorry. Mike sends us an article and I read his article and I go, okay, do you mind if I change the word this and this and this and this and this to this and this? And so now what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of, of writing and I'm, I'm repurposing it for SEO purposes. What we want to do is we want to, we want to let the artist or we want to let the author be the author and, and we want the SEO challenge is ours. You know, we have to figure out how do we... How do we do that? And sometimes it's really obvious, you know, like the, the post about walking a dog was, we, it was like, I, it was all about walking a dog, but the title wasn't about walking a dog. And I suggested to Eric, do you mind if we change the title to walking a dog? So stuff like that really, really helps. Uh, but as, as I'm sure Ross will tell you, because his business is built around this to a large extent, um, most people don't get that. Like, and so, you know, I have editors, copy editors, and then I try and explain it to authors, and they just scratch their heads, and they, they don't get it. So with a dedicated SEO person, we could really, you know, we could really optimize that much, much better. I guess it's, I suppose it's how much does the author want to compromise your art in order to get more eyeballs? Yeah, and most of them don't want to. It'd be like me as a musician. I've worked with engineers before. Where I, you know, I bring in my Fender Stratocaster, and they go, "No, no, go play, go get a Gibson Les Paul." I'm like, "No, this is my instrument." You know, I also happen to have a Gibson ES335, but I'm not playing a Les Paul because it doesn't fit the song. End of story. And then the engineer gets all bent out of shape, and I don't like those discussions. They're just no fun. <laughs> Schedule your content. I, I mentioned this before. Uh, I see, I see so many sites do this. I help them. They, get, they have a dynamic site, right? And they've got about 40 or 50 articles. They're laboring in obscurity. They haven't done any SEO work at all. And then I show them how to enter all the stuff into WordPress and make it look better and SEO optimize it. And so off they go, they do it. And then they go and they launch their site and they publish everything. <laughs> everything. I'm like, no. You know, like do one today, wait two days, do another one, wait two days. The search, you know, the spiders will go, hey look, there's new stuff, there's new stuff, there's new stuff, we better keep coming back. For us, on a daily basis, it's spread it through the day. If somebody's doing it on a weekly basis, basis spread it through the week. I, my advice would be do one on a Monday, the next one do it on a Tuesday, maybe the next one do it on a Monday again. I, use Gravity Forms. I think I've already mentioned that, right? So use forms, make your life easy, automate the content collection process. 
Measure and know your traffic. So with WordPress, you've got WP Stats. You can also use Google Analytics. You can use Quantcast. And you can use AW Stats from your server. Don't trust the Alexa and Compete numbers. They always look great when you first start. And then later on, they look awful. Um, they're just ick is the only word I can come up for. But here, here's, this is, if you haven't used Quantcast, this is where Quantcast is really cool. This is quantified data, so they measure us just like Google Analytics does, right? And they, they provide these charts. Actually, let me just do this live. Here's the Life as a Human profile. So in, in, in the Advertise that Life as a Human link, um, it takes you to this. Anybody can come and look at this. You don't need to be logged into anything. This is what our advertisers can see. And so if they go, well, let's have a look at you know, visits per month all time. What does that look like? Well, that's what that chart looks like. They can look at impressions. Notice how um, they've changed it from page views to impressions because advertisers like the word impressions. How many, how many times did we make an impression, right? Uh, but much more powerful than that because you can get a lot of this kind of stuff from, from, from Google, except that Google doesn't present it to the advertiser, right? They give you demographic. So this demographic data, it's, again, it's all you know, guesses, uh, but it's the best, demogra best demographic data that you're going to get. And it, it basically quantifies your audience. What's interesting is when you look here, it says demographic um, age under 18. 28% of our users are under 18. Um, but against the internet average, we have more under 18 readers. And so they, they quantify it that way. They're, they may change that. Same with Hispanic. Right? We're showing that we have 11% Hispanic. They're saying that we're primarily Hispanic. Well, actually, it's 81% Caucasian. So they're just showing this as, as a, a, um, against an internet average. But use Quantcast. Use um, Google Analytics. Does Quantcast uh, cost anything? Quantcast is free. And that's a beautiful thing. Where do they get these stats from? The same way Google Analytics, so you sign up for them and you put a little piece of code on your site and every time you come to the site, they can measure, they go, there's a page view. And they know your IP address, so they know it came from Oak Bay. And if it's Oak Bay, they can look at, they can look at uh, data that they've purchased maybe from Nielsen or whoever, and they can go, okay, the average income in Oak Bay is X, they have 1.2 kids in the house. And then they can. My personal staff. No, it's not. The only thing that's personal about yours is they know you came to visit. Right. They don't know your name. They know your IP address, but they know all of our IP addresses. Yeah. So. so why do you use these instead of the server side? Sorry. Why do you use these, pro these programs instead of the server side stats? Well, the server side stats. If, if yeah, if this is an AW stats chart, and if you look at our uh, page views uh, for October. We had 200 and round numbers, 215,000 quantified page views. AW Stats says we had 421,000. So remember before I talked about that 30% discrepancy? So some of that is in there. But some of these page views were also bots, spiders, stuff like that, right? Um, I, I tend to look, the big metric used to be hits, you know, back in the day, right? I still look at hits, but not from the standpoint of, um, I'm going to tell people we did X amount of hits, although sometimes it's kind of exciting to say that. It's more for me to know how busy is the server. And one thing, if you look at, look at that last line, okay, so it says that in August of 2011, we did 18 million hits for 421,000 page views. Now go back up to August. That was our previous best month ever. For slightly less page views as far as the back end is concerned, we did like a fraction, you know, less than half of the hits. And look at the bandwidth. We did 308 gigabyte of bandwidth. So what does that tell me? Somebody's, somebody's stealing images. We've, we've found this before, right? People write blog posts and they find this really big juicy image that we have and instead of serving it from their server, they just link to ours. So their blog post shows our images. So we have sometimes 10 or 15 or 20 blog posts being shown by people out there. And, uh, and this tells me, very quickly, I can look at these stats and go, okie dokie. And, you know, I could be really mean and go and take that picture and turn it into a really ugly, awful, horrible picture that suddenly shows up on their website. But what we, usually what we do is we just make it really small. <laughs> they had this really 
beautiful picture now. It's this tiny one. You know, so, yeah. But isn't it small on your site as well? Then? No, I make the change at our site so that, yeah. There's a study that was done by Jacob Nielsen, and it's called Partici Participation Equality. Of, have you ever seen this, Ross? A large-scale multi-user communities online, social networks that rely on users to contribute content to build services, share one property. Most users don't participate very much. Often they simply lurk in the background. In contrast, a small majority do a disproportionate amount of the work, of the content. Now here, this is really interesting. They've actually, you know, broken this down. User participation often or more or less follows a 90 to 9 to 1 rule. 90% of the people who come to your website are lurkers. 9% of the people who come to your website contribute from time to time, but other things dominate their, their priorities. 1% of the users participate a lot and account for more, most of the contributions. When it comes to blogs, it's even worse. It's, it's 95 to 5 to 0.01. And if I look at our comment count versus our content count, our, we're at 0.38. So we're actually four times better than the blogs, but we're still worse than the 90 to 9 to 1 thing. And so uh, an important thing in a website or a blog isn't just the content. It's engaging and somehow driving more comments. If I can drive... 0.1% more comments, I'm up to 0.5. That's a big increase. You know, maybe, I mean, it equates to another 1,000 comments, but those 1,000 commenters bring in more commenters. Make sure that at your sites, I just mentioned this one to Ross, that, you, that you're using um, subscribe to contents reloaded, so there's a little box underneath your comment box so people can subscribe to the comments. So you leave a comment at the site and you can click and go, I want to know if anybody says something about what I said, right? So you get an email. It says, hey, there's a new comment at the site. You come back. Another page view, yay! Right? And, and so on. It also lets people subscribe without leaving a comment if they want. So it's a powerful little, little plug-in. Okay, I'm going to just end with a little story. Another one. So... Two ways to drive comments, right? Okay, I read this great article, and, uh, and we'll, 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 we'll make a hypothetical scenario here. You and I are experts in trucks, and we've got these great truck websites, but you're getting more traffic than I am. And I don't really agree with some of the stuff that you say. And I, I want to find a way to get some of your comments over to my site. So what I do is at my site, I write a post about you. And I write a post about you that's not all that flattering. I'm not going to be rude. But I'm going to challenge you. And then, I'm going to, and then I, turn, I publish it with comments turned off. So your only recourse is to publish something at your site, talking about the article I wrote at my site, leaving comments on. People actually do this. There's some big names out there that do this. And I, we're not going to stoop to that, but I just thought you might find it kind of a humorous strategy. And the other one is the Yahoo thing. How many people read Yahoo articles? You know, um, Ford introduces new concept car, it's beautiful, you'll love it. And so, you know, that's the title, right? And you click on it, there's no picture. And it's a shoddily written piece. Of course, there's no picture because they want you to use their search engine, Image Find, to go and find the image from the article, which drives more page views. But when you look in the comment fields, you'll always see yet another awful article by Yahoo. And then this entire discussion, you can almost predict, and then somebody will come along and go, well, it wasn't that bad, really. They're trying to give us some good information, right? They have people. There's, pe there's websites out there. I know this ipso facto. They ha there's websites out there that have, like, little, mi they have minions that when they, when they launch an article, people go and do that kind of thing just to drive more commentary. So I don't think I'd ever want to do that. But I think that having an intelligent group of people who might look at a particular article and be invited to make comments. So if, if it was an SEO article, I mean, I know Ross probably does this in his world, right? He'll leave comments at other SEO sites, right? If we had a, an article on pets, we should have people who come in and, and talk about pets. And that's it. <laughs>